for the past week or so, I've been running an IQ test every day or so. And <laughs> I, I never really paid attention to it before, which I see as a common pattern, uh, being intelligent in the way that IQ tests work, which is a very specific kind of intelligence. And mostly they're kind of testing for this general intellectual intelligence, how quickly you can learn things. It's, it's a big part of a speed, speed thing, recognizing patterns. And you have to know a bunch of patterns. If you have a lot of patterns memorized, it helps figure out number sequences and stuff like that. Uh, so to a large extent, IQ tests can be learned. You can improve your score quite a bit by practicing them, which is why I'm practicing them. And because I never really paid attention to it, I never really took them seriously. I believe I scored in the mid 130s pretty easily uh, without trying too, too hard before, but I didn't join in the high IQ societies or anything because I didn't care. My answer to someone saying that I was intelligent before was always that intelligence is highly contextual, which is still true. <laughs> but now I, I want to want to get like the stamp of certification for some high IQ society. You know, I think I can definitely, I, I'm in, even now, I'm in the top 5%, but I, I used to be higher. So I want to make it at least in the top 2%, preferably higher if you know, if I could, but I think even now the top 2% is definitely doable for me. And I've been testing close, like high 120s, low 130s. And I believe you have to get over a 132 IQ test to join Mensa, which is the most popular one, uh, 98th percentile. So the top 2% of people can join that, which has a large amount of people. I mean, two out of every 100 people is quite a bit. So that's, that's an interesting little endeavor and we'll we'll see how it actually goes it's a pain in the butt because i'm gonna have to travel and pay to take tests proctored tests so i want to train <laughs> before i actually go to do that and i have i have other projects going on i resurrected my active projects board i put that on facebook uh, vitam mortuis reto i bring life to the dead and i have several toastmasters projects going on I want to finish up Advanced Communicator Gold. I just have a, one seminar to give. I have to give a one-hour seminar. I have to arrange that. You know, it's a little bit of a major thing, but not huge. So I'll do that in the next couple of months, hopefully before the end of the year. And I'm working on doing the Vice President of Education stuff to really get the Montague Group going and develop their systems. Uh, me and Roger Knopf, are, he's the secretary up there now, so we're really kind of setting up their systems for that. We got the Mensa stuff going on or just high IQ in general. I've got an awesome psychology model. I combined, I was working on three different psychology models, some kind of realizations I had after the meditation stuff, mixing it with perceptual control theory and some of the, the early work studies on hysteria by Joseph Brewer and Freud, but I consider Freud significantly less significant and uh, Joseph Brewer much more important Freud had a lot of confidence and he wanted to be famous and somewhat charismatic so he became that and he developed a very good financial model for psychology uh, but Joseph Brewer was really the guy that came up with a lot of stuff and Freud fluctuated over his life how much credit he gave to Brewer at times he was like oh yeah this guy did a lot and then other times he's like ah, I did most of it uh, it's kind of funny but I consider Joseph Brewer much more useful anyways I got these three models and I actually have them over there that have been kind of working on separately and then I I realized that you know that they, they actually they kind of go together they they interrelate so man there it is and it's uh it's extremely interesting it's it's very simplified as all models are to some extent and this is quite a bit simplified but i, I think it's to a good measure very applicable very useful so i'm gonna work on implementing that and organizing a lot of stuff because now i'm taking on more stuff again because I have more energy and I have more mental clarity so I can take on more stuff but I have to do it I still have to do it in a very selective way because it's pretty easy to hit my limits now <laughs> and they're lower than what they were and I'm working on lateral chain training uh, which is you're 
your strength side to side essentially right we normally when people work out they train a lot of forward and backward like pushing pulling stuff like that and this the side to side gets left and i used to be able to do that flag where i grab on a pole and stick up sideways and that was so much i felt so good uh when i was doing that and i didn't even relate it i put in a pull on back about a 10 foot pole uh just just big enough to like wrap my hands around or not quite very small hands not quite wrap my hands around and uh put it like four feet in the ground in a bucket of cement and that will work especially now that the ground's going to freeze pretty soon and i'm i'm hoping to build back up at least at least a little bit and i've made a little bit of progress over the last couple of weeks on that uh it's going pretty good i do have to be careful with that too because i did some really basic exercise that doesn't seem to cause any problems but I did some other lateral chain stuff like you see yoga people do it where they stick their arm out on their side on the floor and then they stick the other hand up in the air and that threw my neck off somehow so I had some issues with that so it's interesting what what works what doesn't what I can do what I can't do and where exactly I have to progress and then the writing is going very good uh, so I wrote the, the second article for the first essay for the International Society for Philosophers and that's that's really interesting I'm getting some interesting feedback from people and it's been interesting to explore so I'll probably have like one more part of the essay and I think one more part and then that essay will be finished up and then I have three more essays to go they all have to be at least 2500 words this one might end up going quite a ways over some of them are interrelated some of them are not i think four pretty interesting subjects but really i started off with this one the most uh, the most important question in philosophy i started with albert camus and it's uh is life worth living essentially it doesn't really phrase it as a question but that's how it was rephrased as a question and i'm proposing better questions and then connecting answering some of those questions with things like you know what are values and what do we value like victor frankl and i'm going to dive in soon to some insights from benjamin franklin and this, this little tiny book from 1725 is awesome a dissertation on liberty and necessity pleasure and pain pain it's is one of the coolest books i've ever read and i think benjamin franklin's coolest book uh his autobiography is also awesome but <laughs> it's got really unique views and he published it and he was just gonna I think he printed like a hundred books or something like that and he was gonna distribute it to friends and then people ended up not liking it or disagree with it some very has some very controversial stuff and especially about religion his metaphysical views and so he tried to collect them all destroy them all he was gonna save one copy for himself but obviously he didn't quite collect them all and then there was a reprint later that he didn't know about that was adjusted that weren't really his views but we we still have the original which is so cool uh super interesting it's it's interesting the stuff we have from from history you know we have basically his autobiography are notes to his son or grandson about advice you know we have that book that he wanted to destroy we have the diary of marcus aurelius we have the letters to the grandchildren of william penn who was the founder of pennsylvania and all, all sorts of stuff it's, it's just interesting what we have and then the fiction writing that i'm doing where i'm imitating replay but turn it into another story is crazy hard <laughs> <laughs> harder than I than I originally thought it was going to be and I didn't think it was going to be easy but I think extremely fruitful uh, it's very interesting right you're trying to build a neural circuit essentially the reason a good writer can write the way they can is because they have a certain neural circuitry in the way it's developed so if you're trying to build that you have to fire it and essentially the circuitry is already there it's just not correctly insulated with myelin right that's skill development so you got to get that to fire which will activate the myelin to insulate it and then it makes it easier faster more efficient in every way in firing and that's how you develop skills and that i believe is going to work really good trying to imitate the story that i really like uh, which is replay which i consider the greatest novel of all time actually by far there's a lot of other novels i like i have a whole stack of them
here's a stack of other novels that I really like, some of my favorites. But I've tried rereading those, and I can't. Because I've already read the story, just don't. I'm a pretty active reader when I read. I am not very passive, like some people are kind of escapist. Uh, I'm not at all. I can be passive or watch a movie or a television show, but not, not reading. I'm, I'm really involved, really active. And replay, I've reread a dozen times, something like that. I'm reading it again now. I'm almost constantly just slowly reading it. And the audiobook is really good too. And it never gets boring. I, I don't think it ever will. So in my opinion, by far the greatest novel of all time, I can't find any, I can't find something close, even on all these other ones that I really like, they're just, uh, it's on a different level. So you're taking something at that high of quality, and then you're trying to imitate it pretty close, but completely adjust it. I mean, I'm changing the story quite a bit, uh, and it's a completely different story, so it's, it's a lot changed. And I have to fire those same neural circuits in my head to solve the same types of problems. So essentially, I'm imitating the skill development in the, the writing style and the neural circuitry of Ken Grimwood when he's writing this. That was kind of my theory when I first started this exercise. I'm only a few blog posts in. You know, I've been doing it maybe a week, and I think it's very true. I, I think it's... It's working really well, so we'll we'll continue that. I, that'll be a long one because I'm going paragraph by paragraph, and it's not easy. <laughs> so I might be trying to do that for years. We'll we'll see how it goes, uh, but I think it's extremely fruitful already. And then that'll just compound over time as you develop, as I develop those neural circuits. So that's my plan.